Okay, as I just announced last week, so Alibaba Cloud expands to support validators and infrastructure on Avalanche public chain. Uh, without further ado, let's do a quick round of uh, self-introduction. So today, actually, we have uh, both sides, an expert from Alibaba Cloud and Avalanche. So Wilson is head of uh, Asia, Avalabs, and Lini is uh, uh, technical advisor, Avalabs. Well, we also have uh, Alex, the senior solution architect from Alibaba Cloud Intelligence. Yeah, maybe we can have a quick self-introduction. Thank you, James, for having us here to join this webinar. Um, hello, everyone. This is uh, Wilson. I lead the uh, Asia market for um, Avalabs. And then um, having my team uh, here in Asia, basically we cover a broader region uh, in Asia uh, from different aspects, including um, business, um, marketing community, operation. Um, also, we look at different kind of um, ecosystem project uh, to deploy our capital in. Um, also today, we have our technical advisor, Li Ning. So he basically helped us to cover a large um, aspects, especially in the technical direction. Um, to help the Asia uh, partners to grow in Avalanche. So, any Thanks, Wilson, and thanks, James. I'm honored to be here today for this uh, great event. So, my name is Lini. I'm right now the technical advisor of Avalanche. I'm so honored to witness this great partnership between Avalanche and Alibaba Cloud. And I'm pretty sure from our introduction, we can help the developers and the projects to use the Web3 tools and the infrastructure we provided to access to the new Web3 world. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Lini. Alex, please. Hi, hi, I'm Alex uh, from Alibaba Cloud International Singapore team. I'm the leader of the Web3 uh, solution team in Singapore. Wilson, so maybe you can give us a walkthrough of Avalanche and Avalanche ecosystem? Yeah, sure. I think it's come through, let's have some background understanding of um, how blockchain developed until now. Sure. That is an important aspect, especially for many developers from Alibaba. I think they're migrating from Web 2 to Web 3. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand some background there. Yeah. Um, if, if we look at when Ethereum starts in 2015, so when Ethereum starts from 2015, um, the smart contract brings the all programmable possibilities in, into the blockchain uh, environment. But that stage is actually, it's very early stage. Um, the capacity performance is limited. So when we start Avalanche in 2018, so that is the stage, if you can imagine, we're turning country um, site into a new city. So if you are looking at different kinds of cities, if you look at Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen, so imagine we're building a new Shenzhen. So this city, we're turning into a concrete floor. We start building on top. But what you need, what are the differences between different cities? Um, it's important, it's infrastructure, uh, operations, speed, security. So you see every new city give you this kind of advantage to build on top of it. So if you imagine we're building a new Shenzhen that um, all the infrastructure we're building provides such advantage, allow builders to build on top in a much faster speed higher securities mm -hmm. and the uh, scale of the solution that we provide, uh, such as subnets that allows user to build in a much uh, flexible way and faster way. So um, when we build Avalanche, there are two main advantage that we offer into the market. Firstly is our uh, core consensus. Um, the consensus we're building, you imagine it's like a, if you imagine the first version of the consensus, like a single core chip, where what we build it's like a multi-core chip. It provides a much faster speed. Um, in, in technical term, we call it time to finality that for Avalanche, we at this moment uh, in the whole market, we're the fastest. So if you check online, um, the average time to finality we, we perform, it's around 0 0.7 to 0 0.8 seconds. So usually it's less than one second. That means we finalize the transaction within a second, which is super fast. So it just imagine like in the traditional, um, the version one of the blockchain, if you're running in a, in a much slower road, but now we're providing a highway yeah. where people can drive through. Okay. So that's the one of the very key important aspects of Avalanche. That is the consensus. And the second part, which is very important, it's the subnet. 
Okay. Because imagine like if everyone driving on one road, it will be jammed in somehow. But then how can it scale in that direction? There's two scalable solutions. Mm -hmm. One is vertical, one is horizontal. Yeah. So vertical, basically, you, you can imagine it's like layer two. So layer two, basically, is like you're driving on, on one road, but you have a bridge on top. Yeah. But we provide, it's a subnet solution. That means it's a parallel expansion. You can drive your car in a second ring road, third ring road, fourth ring road, fifth ring. You can extend it unlimitedly on avalanche. Mm -hmm. So if for, say for example, government related projects, uh, high transaction projects, um, institution grade kind of projects, you need to customize your own way. Mm -hmm. Then you can have the subnet to realize this. Okay. But what we do is that we provide our consensus, then you can customize in that environment. So I think these are the two uh, key aspects mm -hmm. of um, Avalanche that provides to the okay. new blockchain environment. Yeah, thanks, Wilson. So yeah. just now you mentioned about the unique consensus mechanism, also the sun nights which provided a highway. And I like the example for the new city was building up. You need a lot of infrastructure. Well, the public chain play a very important role. So that's brought up to the second question. Maybe you can summarize for us uh, what makes our launch the best blockchain solution for Web3 developer and the projects as is claimed. Yeah. Okay, I think that comes to many aspects for what, um, you know, the developers um, in this angle. Mm -hmm. I think firstly for developers, they need a high performance and stable environment, right? So it just imagine you're building a new city. You don't want this whole city is not stable. The roads, you cannot build on the, on the foundation of it. So I think stability, performance, um, security is important for builders to be on top. So I think this is firstly, it's very important for um, the builders to be there. And the second important part I think is important is, is an, you need a, a very um, open and community-driven environment. So that gives all the builders opportunity to build on top rather than, you know, you see a lot of like centralized com competitions there. Mm -hmm. But in this Web3 world, in Avalanche ecosystem, we provide a totally um, open environment for people to build. And even though, say for example, we have our uh, Blizzard funds, so our eco fund. Mm -hmm. So even our eco fund, we look at project that to invest in. Mm -hmm. It's, it's say for example, we invest in one dex. Doesn't mean that we don't invest in second dex. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at to help the ecosystem grow, and then a healthy competition in the ecosystem that to grow the ecosystem as a whole. Mm -hmm. So to build a success, successful ecosystem, you need. Um, two to three key elements. So one, on one side, we are attracting a huge amount of um, the quality developers into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. On the other side, we build a very large um, user base, a okay. community. Okay. And then on top of it, we have our um, investment funds and also the um, incentive program, mm -hmm. uh, such as Avalanche Rush, Mm -hmm. um, multiverse program mm -hmm. to support the ecosystem to grow from there. Okay. So I think with those mechanism, it will help the ecosystem grow in a more healthy way. Okay, yeah. tell me more about it. So actually, just now we talk about the ecosystem of the Avalanche, and also we talk about the uh, the Avalanche as a, as a architecture. So why is different? And uh, I think the projects are more interested. So what are the business benefits for building on Avalanche? So, okay, so I think that the key benefit um, if we look look at the builders' perspective, I think there, there are different types of builders. Um, they're, let's say they're Web3 native builders, yeah. they're Web2.5 builders, they're Web2.2 kind of builders. Yeah. So I think there are different kind of stages. Yeah. So for Web3 builders, they have more knowledge in Web3. Mm -hmm. So I think they are looking for um, high performance stability, which we mentioned just now. That is um, fundamentally Avalanche can offer to those builders. Mm -hmm. But for 2.5 kind of builders, where we see a large on, a number of those kind of builders are coming into the market right now. Mm -hmm. So um, we see a stage where Web2 actually are converged with Web3. Mm -hmm. So what kind of, uh, what kind of those, those builders they're looking for is that uh, on one side, they're trying to um, help the Web2 developers to migrate into Web3. Okay. Uh, on the other side, they are also building a, a certain functionality to fit into the Web3 world. So, Use game as an example. Um, we we we've seen the first stage of so called um, gamify mm -hmm. uh, the ga gamify like one point zero where uh, is so called uh, play to earn. But I think that stage is something like earn to play. 
your your the player is trying to be in Web three to to earn the benefit, so they play the game. But the second stage of the game web that we see, there are many builders they're looking at to build to so called a pay to play to earn kind of structure. In that way, they need to they need to satisfy the a different kind of like from Web two uh, builders and Web three builders, uh, Web two players and Web three players to join the ecosystem together. So how do they benefit from a platform like us is that we provide an infrastructure to satisfy their Web3 needs mm -hmm. and those strong builders with their strong Web2 experience to bring in those users, that kind of connection, it will smooth out the process. Say for example, some functionality that we have like Core Wallet. Mm -hmm. So Core Wallet, imagine it's a wallet, but the further functionality is more like a Web3 browser. So we even can use SDK to embed in the system that they can operate in a much faster way. So imagine those Web2 builders, they're very strong in um, building a, a, a DApp or application plus um, decentralized functionality. So they can easily leverage on our wallet mm -hmm. uh, to build into those functions and can easily access to our ecosystem, uh, Web3 functions, and also the subnet function because the core wallet offers a, a very comprehensive um, service and product from the Web3 environment um, includes our subnet uh, okay. browsing because eventually, say for example, we will have 100, 1,000 subnet. Mm -hmm. How do you operate with other wallet? It's very difficult. And the time to finality that we offer, it's um, less than a second, but the general wallet usually refresh in five seconds. So those kind of functionality will provide a much better user experience for those Web2 builders. So that will service the Web2.5 kind of structure. But then the other type of builders, they may want to make small movements. So say, for example, we look at it more like Web2.2 or 2.3 kind of builders. So they want to make a little bit of testing into the environment. Mm -hmm. Some of them maybe traditional brands, they want to issue like NFTs. So we also connect with OpenSeas. We have a proper infrastructure that is linked to, to the uh, Web3 world. So for them, for those, those builders, they can easily access, say, for example, the NFT marketplace to issue their NFT um, in the ecosystem in a, in a very flexible and easy ways. And then the last stage that we look at it is important. It's the um, smart contract. So we have the EVM, which is equipped um, in our C chain, okay. but we are ABM, so we are like any virtual machine. So if a project they come into, they want to build a different virtual machine uh, on top, it's flexible, so they can customize it. So in that way, we provide a very open uh, open ecosystem um, for those different type of builders to come in and build, and that's the flexibility they will get. Um, eventually, the quantum product, the strong fundamentals that will offer the user a very good experience in the Web3 world. Cool. Yeah. Thanks for Wilson from Avalanche to give us an overview about the Avalanche ecosystem, the overall architecture, as well as the business benefits for the projects built on Avalanche. So now we want to move a little bit deeper. So we have Lini from the Avalanche, especially on the technical experts. So we heard that actually a lot of people talk about Avalanche is the inter uh, is Internet of Finance. And also, uh, the Avalanche have a very unique uh, technical features as well as a tree architecture, uh, uh, which was uh, different from other public chain. So maybe Lini can share a little bit more about uh, Avalanche, the technical part. Thanks for having me for this technical presentation of Avalanche. My name is Lini. I'm the technical advisor of Avalanche. I'm honored to be here, and uh, this is an exciting moment that Avalanche partnered with Alibaba Cloud to provide the infrastructure for developers and projects to access to the Web3 technology and uh, applications. So now let's get started. Okay, what is Avalanche? Avalanche is a public blockchain that play as a global financial network for issuing and trading all the digital goods. And we enable millions of validators to process thousands of transactions per second with near instant finality. We do that using a protocol which is completely green, 
quiescent, and we pair this extremely high throughput and fast finality protocol with the architecture which can meet the unique needs of financial products and decentralized applications. We have accomplished this through the notion of subnets. So subnets allow anyone anywhere to spin up a tailor-made network with custom virtual machines and the complex validator rule set. So Avalanche really lays the foundation for the platform of platforms with thousands and thousands of these public and private networks all emerging into the global marketplace, which we call the internet of finance. So I will say there are four unique technical features of Avalanche network. The very first is network of networks with compound network effects instead of being a silo blockchain with only one validator set. We are a heterogeneous network of many blockchains with many validator sets. So the second is that you have your application as a virtual machine rather than a smart contract. Technically speaking, a virtual machine is a state machine. It has a state of your blockchain, a state transition function, transactions, and the APIs with which user can interact with your blockchain. The third feature is that we have dynamic sets of validators called subnets, which can validate your own blockchain. Subnets are dynamic sets of validators working together to come into consensus on the state of a set of blockchains and subnets are incredibly powerful. The spectrum with one end being completely permissionless network and the other end of the spectrum being completely permissioned networks really open up the entirely new world of legally compliant blockchains and networks. And the last one is the consensus. So average consensus, which is a huge radic breakthrough into the computer science field. The simple words to describe the features of this novel consensus could be totally decentralized, robust, high throughput, fast finality, lightweight, quiescent, adaptable to various conditions. So it is rich and diverse in character. That's the nature of Avalanche network. Yeah, when James said we have a three chain architecture, I want to show you this because this is really a great data visualization of our whole platform, which you, we call the primary network. And this will give you a sense of how things look today on Avalanche. Avalanche, as I mentioned, is a heterogeneous network of many different blockchains and many different validator sets. This was live now on Avalanche. It consists of three different blockchains, which are X, P, and C chain. So the very first is X chain. X chain is for exchanging assets. And this is where the native AVAX token was generated. The total amount of AVAX token is 720 million with a fixed cap. It's like Bitcoin in that regard. You know how many are there and how many will ever be there. You can also create your own assets on X chain. Besides the fungible tokens, you can also create non-fungible tokens. So NFTs are huge. I'm pretty sure you know what's up with that, right? So you can transfer AVAX tokens, create your variable or fixed cap asset or non-fungible tokens as well. If you look at the middle, you will see the platform chain, P chain. So the platform chain is our administrative center or metadata chain. So this allows you to add validators, delegators, spin up instance of blockchains and create subnets. That's what our platform chain allows you to do. The last thing on the right you can see is our contractor chain, or we call C chain. This is for doing smart contracts, and it is an instance of Ethereum virtual machine today. So we have 100% backwards compatibility with existing Ethereum developer tooling. Let's say if you have a workflow of MetaMask or Truffle or Remix or Open Zeppelin, et cetera, all these different tools, you have 100% backwards 
compatibility with Avalanche CTN. This is very exciting that everything you do today on Ethereum, you can do on CTN with added benefits like extremely high throughput, thousands of transactions per second with very fast finality, oftentimes far less than one second. And it's very, very inexpensive. As you know, one of the things about the Ethereum that it blows up and it becomes more popular. So the transaction fees spike. That does not happen on Avalanche that our transaction fees are very, very low. Like I mentioned, everything you do today on Ethereum, you can do it on CChain. And we view this as an opportunity for developers to have an oversized impact with their work. So it could be becoming a, a critical ecosystem and infrastructure of your dApps on Avalanche CChain. We have a lot of business deals going on behind the scene. And we do give a lot of technical support to new developers for moving to CHN. Okay, again, so that's the primary network which consists of three different blockchains. One thing that is not clear here, but does exist is in this page that we have a totally decentralized cross-chain atomic swap between different blockchains. So cross-chain atomic swap is the holy grail of our industry. And think about this, how much value is siloed in Bitcoin network and how much value is also siloed in Ethereum? It's not incredibly obvious and straightforward how one would move the value back and forth between those two networks, right? On Avalanche, we have baked into our main protocol, the notion of cross-chain atomic swaps. So you know, you'll get this out of the box, the cross-chain bridge or the wallet is called the core. So Wilson briefly mentioned about the core wallet. So the core play as a web extension plugin wallet and also the hub of cross-chain atomic swap gateway at the same time. So like MetaMask, which is commonly used by users, you can use our core extension wallet to access to the whole Avalanche three chain network, as well as this customized subnet, which MetaMask and other wallets do not currently support. So we encourage all developers on Avalanche to try and integrate the core wallet into their work. Speaking about the, uh, the developer tooling and the important, uh, important documentation, Okay, here, if you are doing the development work in Avalanche ecosystem right now, there's a very, very high chance you are dealing with one of these components and very likely you are dealing with all of them because this is what the workflow looks like. Here's our ecosystem tooling, including the web wallet, the faucet token channel, the AVASH, Avalanche Go, and Avalanche GS. I'm assuming you are an adequate experienced uh, background with blockchain development and programming. And even better, you are if you are a veteran developer on Ethereum. So these tools look almost similar to what you have used or maybe you are using right now every day. So due to the limitation of time, I'm not going to dive so deep onto these tools. As said, Avalanche is 100% backwards compatible with Ethereum. So do these commonly used Ethereum development kits. For those specific instruction sets, please go to our online docu documentation website that is docs.avax.network for some details. So this is literally a virtual online library that you can find everything about the technical details of Avalanche whole network. Uh, so next one, the primary network is inherent to Avalanche platform and validates Avalanche building blockchain. Like I introduced, the P chain manage metadata on Avalanche. This includes tracking all the nodes are in which subnet and which blockchains exist and which subnets are validating which blockchain. To add a validator, we will issue the transactions on the P chain. So being asked how to set up a Avalanche node uh, 
uh, here's uh, two materials worth of re reading thoroughly. The very first is uh, like a step by step how to set up a validated node on the Alibaba cloud. So reading this article carefully, this is like a, 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 a hand by hand help you to set up the node with the Alibaba cloud environment. I'm betting you can quickly spin up your own Avalanche node even without much node creation experience. So thanks again for the author of this article. Or if you want to run a local node or create the validator node somewhere else, still visit docs.avax.network slash nodes. Here you will find a more holistic explanations and instructions about Avalanche nodes. Please be noted, once you issue the transaction to add a node as a validator, there's a no way to change the parameters. You cannot remove uh, your stake earlier, change the stake amount, the node ID, the reward address. So please make sure you are using the correct values in the relevant API calls. If you are not so sure, please feel free to join our Discord channel and ask questions there or read carefully this online AVAX docs again. So let's bear in our minds some of the key parameters of Avalanche validator. First, what is staking? So staking is the process of locking up tokens to support a network with receiving a reward in return for increasing the network utility and receiving the monetary compensation, right? So when a validator is done validating the primary network, it receives the AVAX token it staked. It may receive a reward for helping to secure the network. A validator only receives a validation reward if it is sufficiently responsive and correct during the time it validates and make sure the staking period is at least two weeks. The delegation fee rate is at least 2%, and you are staking at least 2,000 AVAX tokens on the mainnet to be a qualified validator. The minimum duration of the validation is two weeks, and the delegation fee rate is at least 2%, as I said. And uh, the maximum duration is one year. So one can start a new validation period on the primary network after finish the previous one. The maximum validator weight. So what does this mean? For example, if you stake the 2000 AVAX tokens to become validator, then only 8000 AVAX tokens can be delegated to your node in total from no matter how many delegators it can also be regarded as the delegation ratio. Avalanche allows for delegation of stake. So this parameter is the percent fee that a validator charges when others delegate tokens to them. For example, if the delegation fee rate is set to be 10 and someone delegates to this validator, then when the delegation period is over, 10% of the total reward goes to the validator and the rest 90% go to the delegator. So a validator will receive a staking reward if they are online and the response for more than 80% of their validation uh, period as measured by a majority of the validators weighed by the stake. You should aim for your validator be online and responsive 100% of the entire staking time. So the reward will send to your wallet address at the end of the staking period is over as long as all these parameters are met. Okay, so that's basic, basically the, the parameters of validator node in the Avalanche primary network. Uh, so being asked the, the spot subnet, I know everyone is very uh, uh, surprised to see how magic is the subnet. So let's, take some of the insights over the subnets. So, so the subnets, as I, I said, is another huge innovation brought by Everlast to the industry. So here I'm going to highlight some of the key points you should know about the subnets. The first one is 
anyone can permissionlessly build a customer subnet in the Avalanche primary network. And the subnets can be either private or the public ones. Decentralized applications, or we call dApps, can be built on these subnets. So you don't need to worry about the consensus algorithm on your subnet because the consensus is provided by the Avalanche primary network for your subnet. And the subnet validators have to be registered and managed by the PHN, as in, I introduced in the PHN's part. And there's no any auction needed or any other financial cost requirement for spinning up your, your own subnet, which means to build up a subnet is literally zero cost. And all the gas consumption on the subnets is the subnet's own created token, not the AVAX token. This should be very friendly to developers and the ecosystem projects that you don't need to worry about the buying the AVAX token, which could increase a financial burden for you anymore. Speaking of how to set up the subnet, here, the, uh, again, this mighty online manual at docs.avax.network slash subnet. It's a, like a babysitting model for helping you to build up the subnet from scratch. I personally tried and set up my own test subnet within like a half an hour, which is quite cool. And I remember I have recorded some of the tutorial videos and shared on YouTube. You may search the keyword avalanche subnet and you will find them. So I'm betting you will be attracted to see how amazing simple time saving to own your personal subnet in Avalanche. And because of the top services from Alibaba Cloud and anyone can easily set up the validator node as well as spin up the subnets on the cloud environment provided by our partner, Alibaba Cloud. Thanks for your time for hearing my presentation today. And I wish everyone can enjoy the magic brought by the Web3 at the Avalanche. Thanks. I give it to you, James. Thanks for Lini, uh, the technical advisor for our lab for sharing about the whole technical part. Uh, so now I want to ask some opinion from the Alex from Alibaba Cloud. So as a tech, uh, technology industry leaders, uh, is Alibaba Cloud uh, moving to the Web2 world? What do you view? Uh, about this, and uh, maybe you can share with us more about the direction of okay. the house on Web3 industry. Okay, thank you, James. Thank you, Wilson. Thank you, Li Ni. I'm so happy to be here to introduce Alibaba Cloud strategy and our solutions matrix to our customer. I'm Alex uh, from Alibaba Cloud International Singapore team. I'm focusing on the uh, Web3 industry. So as we all know that Web3 is the next major evolution of the internet. And the world is still in the earlier in the embase of the Web3, as Wilson just mentioned. But the market is already demonstrating huge uh, potential. And many customers uh, inside China and outside China came to us and asked our Web3 related technologies. So we see already see the huge potential of this market years ago. So we developed a clear strategy in the Web3 and build developer tools and solution matrix with our partners and form a team focused on the Web3 industry to supporting our Web3 developers. So we want to shop our position in the Web3. So here I will demonstrate our uh, strategies in the Web3. So uh, here is the, uh, our uh, strategy uh, on the Web3, uh, this diagram. Uh, so as a, a underlying infrastructure provider, the cloud provider, Alibaba Cloud. So we provide a secure and robust and elastic uh, eyes and uh, pass uh, services and solutions to our Web3 developers. And we also build our ecosystems 
ecosystem is very crucial to the Web3 industry. So the blockchain is the basis of the whole Web3 industry. So we worked with some top public chain. So Avalanche is one of the top public chain and to provide the full node uh, services and cross chain services. Um, we also worked with other partners uh, from uh, all aspects, including the Web3 security, the Web3 domain, the wallet, the exchange, the development develop, uh, platform to provide a wide development toolkits and solutions uh, to our developers to make their work easier and more efficient. So for the ecosystem part, we always adhere to the principle of partner first. We, Alibaba Cloud, focus on the Web3 underlay infrastructure, the eyes, the paths, and collaborate uh, with professional partners together to serve our customers and pros uh, Web3 ecosystem. So, so what kind of Web3 technologies we can provide to our Web3 developers? So before I answer these questions, we need to figure out what kind of tools and uh, uh, requirements, uh, what kind of this uh, of tools that they need before they decide to start. So a Web3 developer has to choose which blockchain is to build on at first. So Avalanche is obviously the best choice for them. And then they need to uh, figure out how their application will interact with their blockchain. So they may need a node infrastructure providers to let the developer easily set up and manage and um, access blockchain nodes. And they may need a wallet and a key management uh, services to provide uh, the management of their keys and perform interaction uh, with the blockchain. Also, they may need identities to uh, secure access their application. Um, the developer tools they also need. They need to they need those development tools that allow developers to seamlessly interact with applications and the blockchains. So to summarize, that Alibaba Cloud as the underlay infrastructure provider, together with our uh, partners from all aspect, to provide. The, Web3 technologies to developers to lower the barriers to build their Web3 applications and to capture emerging opportunities. So what kind of services that Alibaba Cloud can provide? Um, so here is the overview of our solutions and products. So from the bottom to the top, in the bottom, as a underlayer infrastructure provider, we provide the robust and elastic infrastructures, including the computing, the storage, the network, uh, the database, the big data, the AI and IoT, all kinds of uh, eyes and pass services. And up uh, and on top of it is the Web3 infrastructure, the basis of the Web3 industry. So we together with our public, uh, with our top public uh, chain uh, to provide the public full node services. And uh, in the middle of this, uh, this architecture is the development tools and our ecosystems. Um, here, we, uh, as I just mentioned, uh, we worked with many partners from all aspect of the security, the wallet, the development form, and, uh, including the Avalanche. Avalanche itself provides a variety of development tools. And for Alibaba Cloud itself, we also provide some uh, development platform, like uh, we provide a one-stop mobile development platform. We have the local development platform and to uh, our uh, Web3 developers, and also we will build up a technical community. 
uh, to uh, to uh, to help the innovation ideas and to help the startups. So on top of this uh, solution matrix is our industry specific the solutions. So a, a good Web3 project has uh, four elements. And one of the important elements is the business logic. So uh, the application, uh, Web3 application should have the, their business logic and they, they uh, will be some sub industry of the Web3, like the, they may be, uh, their application may be uh, define or see file application or the game file application or the social file uh, application. So uh, we, for all this sub industry, we have, uh, we provide uh, some common uh, solutions some security or high availability solutions to this industry. And also we will work with our partners to provide some industry specific solutions. For example, for the DeFi or CFI, uh, we worked with our, one of partners provide, uh, to provide the customer insight and uh, precious marketing solutions. And the security is the fundamental thing of the Web3 industry. So for a cloud, a cloud provider itself, we provide some basic uh, security services to our uh, developer, developers to secure their application on cloud or uh, in the mobile side. And we also worked with our partner to provide some Web3 specific uh, security solutions like the, the key solution, uh, the private key management solution, which is crucial uh, for the Web3 because the private key is, uh, uh, is the most important part to protect your asset. And we also have the secure test and smart co contract audit uh, services. So here is uh, what Alibaba Cloud provide in the Web3 uh, industry. And we already, uh, provide services to many customers in this industry. So back to the gems. Yeah, thanks for Alex sharing about uh, Alibaba Cloud perspective. We know Alibaba Cloud is the impact number one cloud. So that means it's not only about the infrastructure, it's also number one in the ecosystem and also the developers. So we do see there is a huge potential for the Web2 and Web3 um, uh, there is a growth over there. So we will be like just a web 2.5 to bridge these two worlds. Okay. And um, thanks everybody to uh, check our webinar. And if you want to learn more about uh, Alibaba Cloud from uh, about our launch, please go to our portal. You can find the coupon and technical support or even the manual how to set up and not use Alibaba Cloud on a launch. And thanks for everybody's time. Yeah.